Teresa Tomlinson. Good afternoon, Columbus. I tell you, you are a beautiful sight. This is what it's all about, folks. The dream does live. And let me tell you, Martin Luther King, that man, he changed the world and he we changed history. Day, but he gave us a legacy, and a legacy that we have to pass down. And today, the reason why you're here is we're celebrating together as a community. And these celebrations are where relationships start. Look around you, because you're going to see people you do not know. And they're here celebrating the same dream you are. That's a common thread, one we can hold on to when there are trying times in this community, and God knows we'll have them. So we appreciate you being here to celebrate our unity, our diversity, and our prosperity. I want to thank the Mayor's Commission on Unity, Diversity, and Prosperity for pulling this together. And folks, there's one woman that if she wasn't here and doing this, none of us would be here, and that's Judy Tucker. So I want you to give her a round of applause. So many people had their shoulders to the wheel. I, I'm not forgetting you. Thank you to all of our tremendous volunteers. We have folks from the Officers Candidate School down in Fort Benning that were helping us out. Thank you, thank you. I want to recognize a couple of officials and then we're going to get on to our awesome program today. I want to also thank Holly Browder with Parks and Rec, Lisa Goodwin. Thank you all. We've got Councilor Mike Baker here with us today. We have our new sheriff, Donna Tompkins. We have school board member, Pat Hughley-Green. Our incredible city manager, Isaiah Hughley. State representative, Calvin Smyrie. State representative, Carolyn Hughley. School superintendent, David Lewis and our chief of police and all of those men and women in blue who helped us in the race today and kept these streets closed off so we could make it Chief Boren. And also I want to recognize uh, my colleague uh, Mimi Woodson on City Council. Thank you. And the Mayor Pro Tem Evelyn Turner Pugh. We want to thank our sponsors, AFLAC. <laughs> AFLAC represents up front. We got Georgia Power and AT&T. Thank you all for making this happen. And let me just leave you with one quote from Dr. Martin Luther King. Folks, we will learn to live together as brothers and sisters, or we will perish together as fools. Thank you all. Help. Help me welcome our next act and stay tuned for the great international star, Damian Escobar, who will be here in just a few moments. Thank you all. Give another round of applause for our Mayor Teresa Tomlinson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you Mr. Spivey Green. This is not the time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or taking the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now's the time to rise up from the dark and desolate valley of racial segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now's the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. But I say to my people who stands on the warm thresholds which leads into the palace of justice, so I say to you, my friends, that even though we are faced with the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. These truths we hold to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and sons of former slave owners will sit down together at the table of brotherhood. So let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. 
Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightened Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and molehill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. And when we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every state and city, from every village and hamlet, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Catholics and Protestants, will be able to join hands and sing the words of that old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we're free at last. Another round of applause for Spivey Green, ladies and gentlemen. I thought I saw Kia Chambers out here. Kia Chambers is out here. Give her a round of applause as well, ladies and gentlemen. And for today's invocation, I want you to welcome Associate Pastor and Minister from the St. Luke United Methodist Church programs, Reverend Cindy Gerard. Okay, here we go. Let the people of God be in prayer. You have called us here, O oh God. You claimed us as your own before we were born. You made us your servants. You desire us to glorify you. When we were cast down, you drew us up as of a mighty, miry bog and set our feet on a rock, making our steps secure. When we lost heart, believing that what we had done was a waste of time, you raised our horizons beyond the range of our eyes. It is not enough that we are faithful, O oh God. It is not enough that our families are cared for. It is not enough that we praise you and call you by name. We must also serve you with our whole lives and with all of our being. You are the Lord of our life and you call us to be lights to this community and beyond, that your providence may reach to the ends of the earth. We drew strength from past victory. Our hearts burned with righteous anger, but our hands are still idle. We confess that our actions do not match our rhetoric. We have typed a men and shared when we should have called our state representatives. We have clicked and tweeted and Instagrammed our way into powerlessness. We have failed to be an obedient people and we seek your forgiveness. Put a new song in our mouths, O oh God, that others may see you in our lives and hear your message from our lips. Keep us from turning to the proud and from following after false gods for you desire not public sacrifice and offering, but an ear, an ear lent to the brokenhearted, a heart open to injustice, a hand lifted for righteousness. You have blessed us with many blessings, but your glory is not found in our strength, but in the weakness we admit to you. Come into our lives and transform us so your glory can shine through our broken places. We ask your protection over and around this community and those we love in the year ahead. Remind us to be kind in our actions and faithful in prayer. Bless our public servants and keep true in them the vision that caused them to submit themselves to public scrutiny and, we confess, frequent derision and ridicule. Raise up people of courage to stand for the least of these. 
inspire servant-minded men and women to run for office. Most of all, fill us with your power, mighty God, for we are setting out on a path filled with rumor and terror, an unknown journey, and we are full of anxiety and fear. Set your prophets as lights to guide us let your spirit burn brightly within us and surround these people gathered here as with a great host of the faithful to encourage us. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. To sing the national anthem, please welcome Miss Lily Francis Anderson. Give another round of applause for Miss Lily Francis Anderson. <laughs> Dr. King wanted to be known as a drum major. Say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness. And all of the other shallow things will not matter. Please welcome to the stage, Sankofa. See you later. 
James Baldwin once said, know from whence you came. If you know whence you came, there are absolutely no limitations to where you can go. Please welcome to the stage, Reverend Vince Allen from the Bridge Church. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tri-City area. I stand here today on the shoulders of greatness. My father, Reverend Rudolph Allen Sr., was born right here on 2nd Avenue. And every day he reminds us of the price and the sacrifice that he paid for us to enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy today. A few days ago, I sat down and talked with him, and he said, son, I realized that the second stanza of our Declaration of Independence was being violated. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, which are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In the mid-60s in Nashville, Tennessee, my daddy began to sit at lunch counters, march, go to jail, and he suffered for his family and for you and me. He decided to come back to Columbus, Georgia, his home, 
in order to express the importance of racial equality. When he came to Columbus, Georgia, his agenda was to sit at counters, to integrate buses, and ultimately to help integrate schools. I was born in 64, but in 69, I entered the hallways of Eastway Elementary School. Schools were not segregated at that time. Four black children walked in Eastway Elementary School to the collars of the N-word, coon, black trash. We finished that year at Eastway and my dad said, I'm gonna send you to Clubview. My cousin and I, Gerald, my oldest brother Rudy went to Eastside Middle School. My oldest sister Valerie went to, uh, went to uh, Richards Middle School. He said, son, I sent you to those schools because I did not want to accept the fact that you were not able to learn and to grow and develop if you had equal opportunity. He realized that separate was not equal. Raised up in that household, my dad was called and threatened. My family was called and threatened. We oftentimes receive phone calls that, you know what, I'm gonna kill your daddy, that N-word, I'm gonna kill him. So here we are, 13 years old, 10 years old, nine years old, five years old, living in a household with someone that was a legend, but with, that was cutting a pathway so that all of us could enjoy what we enjoy today. As a result of that, I'm reminded just a couple of days ago that we've come a long way, but we haven't come far enough. I was in my car, going to my home, and I got stopped by a policeman. I wasn't speeding, wasn't drunk, wasn't swerving, I was stopped. My heart started pounding because I thought about how I had been treated every day I walked in public educational schools calling black trash, the N-word, and I said, you know what, God, you gotta protect me. The officer said, had you been drinking? I said, no, sir. He said, why were you driving like you were? I said, I didn't realize that I made any violations. I left there with my heart pumping, but I realized that we haven't come as far as we need to go. And so today, I'm standing on the shoulders of greatness. As my dad said, I realized that change needed to happen. And if there was going to be change, he was willing to sacrifice whatever needed to be sacrificed, even the comfort of his family, to make things better for an entire community. I stand here on the shoulders of my father, Reverend Rudolph Carter Allen Sr., to say that progress needs to be made still today. Blessings, Columbus, Georgia, and Tri-City area. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Dream Lives Choir. One day when the war is won, 
We will be sure. We will be sure. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours. It will be ours. One day, when the war is won, we will be sure. We will be sure oh, one day when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours. Oh, one day when the war is won, we will be sure. But the enemy like in the garden with Eve causing the vision. The media is filling these broken pieces. I see the mixture and we just seating it up. Fried chicken for Sunday dinner. Yeah. Hey, see, if King never had that dream, then I probably wouldn't be married to my beautiful black queen and up. See, people talking separation. Black and white just go your separate ways now. That's just segregation. But I refuse to give to the enemy's plan. I'm not falling in his hand with God's plan and demand to stop. Belief is that God's presence will fill this earth. For all stand for His glory, no matter what color of skin we got. See, there's too much on the line for future generations. We gotta teach them to love each other. No color hating. The world is waiting for sons of God to manifest His glory. My eyes have seen the glory. Go. Yeah. When the glory. Thank <laughs> you. 
At this time, I have the honor to present to you the moral leader of our nation. I have the pleasure to present to you Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came... Dr. King said, if we are to have peace on earth, our loyalties must transcend our race, our tribe, our class, and our nation. And this means we must develop a world perspective. Please welcome to the stage the International Friendship Ministry. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation. The International, the International Friendship Ministries dance team will perform a traditional dance known as the Harabe Tapatio. The Harabe Tapatio, as it is commonly known, is a mixture of various musical genres with the root of the 15th century dance from Spain called the Harabe Gitano. The first Hispanics who arrived to Mexico performed this dance. In 1870, the Rabat Tapatio emerged as a symbol of national unity and it, it, as it is a mixture of the most famous dance styles from different regions of Mexico. The dance was performed for the first time in 1910 in the Coliseum Theater in Mexico City.
that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood? I have a dream. Dr. King is famously known for saying, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Please welcome to the stage, Reverend Richard Allen Washington, pastor of New Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church, Lithonia, Georgia. Columbus, it's a great day as this unity continues. A few weeks ago, we were released in the blockbuster film Fences to see an amazing story of a man and a woman who worked together to work out their differences. One of the blessings of the movie Fences by August Wilson is the power of conversation and the power of being able to share your feelings. What's interesting is that even though they disagreed and struggled, there was a certainty about expressing themselves. If we're to move forward in this great city of Columbus, we must work together and move beyond personal preferences. Personal preferences will never allow us to hear each other. Personal preferences will never allow you to be heard. Personal preferences operate in a distinctive defensive position. But if Columbus is to move forward, she must move forward being willing to hear everyone from the north side, the south side, the east side, the west side. Every side of Columbus must put aside its personal preferences to hear the other side speak. The north cannot have everything. The south must have some things. The South cannot monopolize everything, and the West cannot have all. There must be some East Side resurrection. There must be some West Side distribution. Everyone must have a piece of this amazing city's economic stability and certainly family love. I encourage you, North Side, to crawl a little bit. I encourage you, South Side, to walk a little bit. I encourage you West Side to get on your knees and partner with your brothers and sisters on the East. And I encourage you East Side to pull everybody together and stand together. Our president currently, the 44th president of these United States, suggested in his closing speech to America and this world that if we had the courage to rely on what we did over eight years ago, we still can in America. I believe, without a shadow of a doubt, in Columbus, Georgia, that African Americans, Latinos, Asians, whites, and others who are struggling to find their voice can have a voice in this place once we lay aside our personal preferences. Let's walk together, and in the words of an old Negro hymn. Walk together, children, don't get weary. There's a great camp meeting in the Promised Land. Are you ready? We are proud to present a world-renowned violinist and two-time Grammy Award-winning artist. Our guest today our guest today received his start on the grind from the Nothing But Strings album and has now emerged as a notable solo artist headlining across the country. Humbled in his dealings, but confident in his craft. Damien makes it no secret that he is determined to gain recognition for being the dopest violinist to cross over into mainstream music. In an industry not overpopulated by instrumentalists, this hip-hop violinist is looking to change the game. He's a pioneer. Columbus, Georgia, and Tri-City, Damian Escobar. How you guys doing? 
I want to start my setup. First off, it's hot. And I thank everybody for coming out today. I'm not complaining because I just came from 15 degrees in New York. So it's a blessing. I thank you guys. I thank the city of Columbus for having me out today to, to represent and honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. And the first song I'm going to play for you guys is called Freedom. My version of Freedom inspired by Martin Luther King. It goes like this, Columbus. Bring it up, Jen. We're going to vibe out today, y'all. Jen, bring me up. If you brought somebody with you today that you feel is down with you no matter what, say oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about that one person that holds you down no matter what, say oh yeah. oh yeah. This song is dedicated to that person, Columbus. It goes like this. It's a different vibe. Thanks, Corona.
I'm gonna play a song for you guys, uh, and I'm, you know what? I'm gonna play this song for you guys by uh, one of the greatest artists who I've ever lived that passed away last year. And it's super appropriate, I was gonna play one of my songs, but I wanna play this song by Prince, it's called Purple Rain. And it goes like this.
Thank you. Peace and love, Columbus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Peace and love. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was extraordinary. True. Columbus, what do you think of Damian Escobar? Thank you. Amazing. It was truly extraordinary, and we're so appreciative of you being here. Here's a little something so that you can remember Columbus, Georgia, wherever you go, and please you so know much. you're always welcome here. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for Damian Escobar. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Dream Lives Choir for their final selections.
Gentlemen, the Dream Lives Choir.